theaters must be destroyed once and for all. The danger is real. I'm no coward. Nor was the man executed yesterday. For me, to play somebody who is an artist of torture uh, is a really welcome challenge. Topcliffe is supremely vengeful and ambitious and uh, depraved, yeah, he's, he's a dangerous guy, he's the most feared guy in London uh, at the time and he had access to grind, so uh, he's got his knives out for, for uh, a lot of the characters in this story. He hates the theatre, he hates the writers, he hates the arts, he wants to cut the, cut the throat of the, the spokespeople of that generation. I was brought into the show kind of totally by surprise, took me by surprise. I didn't know anything about the show at the time and uh, I read the scripts and it's kind of a part I've been crying out for. It's a really juicy villain uh, to play this real dangerous guy. I, I did my research as much as was available to me on Top Cliff, which is which is some startling stuff and, and quite elusive as well. But uh, Craig Pierce had also done a lot of work. I found a lot of intrigue in the documentary The Act of Killing by Daniel Oppenheimer, which is a fantastic film that uh, came out a couple of years ago about death squads in the Philippines and how they found uh, new forms of uh, torture, murder, killing, and, and the pleasure that they took in it. And so I, I was drawing on a lot of sources, basically. And my own kind of sense of uh, mischief and uh, humor and uh, depravity. I've got plenty of that. My history with Shakespeare growing up was like, Shakespeare, what? No, like, please, no. Like, I was really allergic to it growing up and um, I kind of avoided it as much as possible because I thought it was probably something that was irrelevant to my experience and my world. But, you know, as, a, as I've grown up, I've realized that, you know, every age has its agitators and its spokespeople and, and there's an urgency with which people communicate and that's, that's, that's just as important today. We're living in a time where voices are being raised and uh, I think that's completely resonant with what Shakespeare was doing in his time. And then you'll see in the course of the series, Shakespeare is raising his voice using poetry and using his ingenuity to say something that dare not be said and uh, doing it much more effectively than if he just said, uh, in plain English, so uh, I think people will enjoy uh, the ingenuity of William Shakespeare in this story.